Hi, your 12s. This is Mr. Lim again. Number 10 out of the series uh, for redox, primary, secondary, and fuel cells. Okay, so we're not really going to be learning much about primary, secondary, and fuel cells. I'm going to leave that up to you because there's a lot of stuff to read about, a lot of stuff to make notes on. And if I was to do this, I'd have to make three videos and that'd just be too much of it. So um, we're going to learn some differences. You name some functionality. And ideally, by the end of your research, you should be able to uh, name and describe the functions and draw label diagrams of examples of primary, secondary, and fuel cells. So generally, we understand that galvanic cells use electro, are electrochemical cells which can turn chemical energy into electrical energy. So we are turning chemical energy into electrical energy. That's what we're doing. All right. But they're not very good at it. OK, so they're not the most efficient because ideally you would want either a very large or specific voltage. And uh, these ones don't produce that much, uh, have a large running time or a large amount of oxidant and reductant to continue the reaction for a long periods of time. Um, you want it to be stable and not have uh, side reactions. You want it to be physically tough and you want it to be light, right? Or have a good energy density. So these galvanic cells are not very good at doing this because, well, they're limited to standard conditions. You can't change the conditions uh, to increase voltage or the length of current flow. So you can't like uh, make the one molar, two molar to make it uh, have more reactants so it will last longer. Okay. They also contain unnecessary oxidants and reductants because remember, each half cell contains the oxidant and the reductant pair. All right. So therefore, they have a reactant or something that's just sitting there as a spectator, which won't actually react, which therefore is kind of just wasted, uh, wasted weight. All right. They're generally quite fragile because, you know, you make galvanic cells out of like glass and stuff. And some components uh, can react with the air around them, which is not ideal. So um, commercial cells and things, these are the things that you buy, like batteries and stuff that you use in electrical devices, especially mobile electrical devices, because, you know, that's what we use. Um, are designed to be efficient converters of chemical potential energy to electrical energies, and there are three major types, primary, secondary, and fuel cells. Okay, so primary cells are non-rechargeable, secondary cells are rechargeable, and fuel cells are cells that run on a fuel source. Okay, so imagine the phone inside your, the battery inside your phone, is that a primary, secondary fuel cell? It's a secondary cell. All right, so let's have a think. Primary cells are non-rechargeable batteries which focus on simplicity to reduce the costs. So these are the ones that you make and then you throw away. These are your generic double A's or triple A batteries and stuff like that. All right. So your uh, examples are your zinc manganese oxide cells, and you can have acid or alkaline versions of these. All right. And then you have your silver zinc oxide cells. Um, sorry, sorry, the zinc and silver oxide cells, which is the button cell. All right. Um, which is uh, another one that you put inside all your watches and stuff like that. So. When you do your research, there's a couple of things that you need to think about. All right. The reason why you can't charge these primary cells. Okay. So think about what's happening to the products to make them so that you can't turn them back into reactants. All right. Why do alkaline batteries last longer than acid batteries? Okay. So have a try and find out why that is. Why button cells last for so long? All right, and what are the voltages for both of these batteries? All right, you should be able to also find the half equations, things like that, to kind of just give you some stuff to know. Um, I don't anticipate there will be an exam question where it just tells you, oh, tell me all about primary cells and stuff like that. They'll just show you a primary cell and then they'll get you to work out what's the half equation or here or what's this and what's the voltage. So those are all things that we've covered in previous videos, but just at least you know the definition of a primary cell. Secondary cells are rechargeable batteries, which are focused on the ability for products to be returned to their reactant state to be used again. Your examples are your nickel cadmium cells and your lead lead sulfate cells, which is also known as a lead acid accumulator, which is also known as your car batteries. All right. There's lots of questions on car batteries, so make sure you do a lot of research on those. All right. And then your lithium ion cells. OK, so have a think about what are the reactants and the products um, of the discharge process, which is when they are being used, right? And then what happens to those products? Where do they go? Do they float around in solution? Do they end up somewhere? And so how are they available for reaction again when you recharge them? Okay, so how does the battery keep the product close by to be returned to as a reactant form during the charging process? Okay, things about the lithium ion cells. Why does lithium have such a high energy uh, density? And then again, just really focus on the lead acid accumulator. There's lots of questions uh, quite often about this. Um, uh, it's quite a cool thing, and you can have a read about it when you do that. Right. Then finally, fuel cells. 
are uh, cells which require a constant input of reactants and removal of products to produce a current. Okay, so our examples are hydrogen oxygen fuel cells, either in acid or alkaline forms, or methanol oxygen fuel cells. Okay, so you really need to be able to draw a diagram of a fuel cell. All right, a very simplified diagram of a fuel cell. There's one on the next slide, so that's fine. All right, how to identify the cathode and anode from the gases that are input from which side? Okay, so you look at which side the gases are input, then you work out which one's a cathode and anode. Why are hydrogen fuel cells considered zero emissions? And then why are there kind of issues in terms of storing hydrogen? So, you know, let's make a hydrogen fuel cell car. Wait a minute, how do I store this hydrogen? All right, and deploying large networks of uh, hydrogen refueling stations, what are the issues there? Have a bit of a read through and make some notes on that, and then we'll have a look at that later. All right, so here's a question from an exam. Again, this is a very simplified uh, fuel cell. Okay, so if you can draw one of these, and then you should be fine, and then you can just change what the gases are that go in and out at various points of time. All right, so several types of fuel cells, most differ in terms of the fuel being utilized. Most common fuel cells is the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. Partially completed diagram sketches there of hydrogen oxygen fuel cell operating with an acid electrolyte, okay, shown in the diagram below. The only overall chemical product of the fuel cell is water, okay. So, which of the following statements is correct regarding the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell shown in the diagram above? Okay, so I've got added the two half equations here, right? So the half equations here, here is the oxygen, here is the hydrogen. There are alkaline versions of this equation, right? So you're gonna make sure that you pick the right one with the acids there, okay? And you'll see the alkaline versions in the next slide, right? But make sure you pick the right one for the acid or the alkaline version, right? Actually, it doesn't make that much of a difference. They do end up the same, but it just helps you a bit. All right, so let's have a look. This is in the downhill arrangement. These are in the right way around, downhill. Okay, so therefore, you will be able to work out what is going on in terms of oxidation and reduction. So this one is going that way, that one's going that way. Uh, this is gaining electrons. So gaining electrons is reduction. Okay, and the, this side here is oxidation. So let's have a look. The H2 here is coming in this side, right? If it's coming in this side, then this one here, this electrode here has oxidation occurring on it, okay? The oxygen comes in the other side. That means this electrode here must have reduction coming out of it, which means that this one here is the anode. Remember, oxidation always occurs at the anode, and this one here is the cathode, therefore always uh, where the reduction occurs, okay? Uh, anode where oxidation occurs, this is where it loses, oops, yep, 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 where it loses electrons, where it loses electrons, which means that the electron flow is going to be this way, All right, and then if the electron flow is going to be that way, the positive ions are going to follow the electron flow, so all of these little hydrogen ions are going to end up flowing that way, okay, and negative ions, whatever negative ions they use, will go the other way. All right, so let's have a look at the options here. Which of the following statements is correct regarding this fuel cell above? Reduction occurs at X. Does reduction occur at X? No, it does not. Um, electrons move from Y to X. Is that true? No, nope, they go the other way. Cations move towards Y. Okay, so remember cations are positive ions. Positive ions are moving towards Y. Yes, that's true. And the EMF of EMF of this cell under standard conditions is 1.15 volts. Okay, they would have picked this 1.15 because it was probably matching one of the other water reactions. So you're going to just really make sure that you're looking for the right ones, okay, where, uh, where hydrogen and oxygen are the only ones that are produced. All right, um, and so we have uh, the difference here is 1.23 volts. And 1.23 volts is actually the standard one for all hydrogen oxygen fuel cells. So if you just memorize that number, that's also useful. useful. So that's wrong. So that's why it is C. Okay, let's have a look here. Next one. Okay, so fuel cells have several differences uh, compared to blah, blah, blah. They require a constant blah, blah, blah. An alkaline fuel cell here. So here we have the different one, the alkaline. It's earliest fuel cell, cell, blah, 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 blah. Briefly describe the chemistry of an alkaline uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. Your answer should identify the oxidant and the oxidizing agent and the reductant, the reducing agent. Um, in addition, saying the function of the potassium of the potassium hydroxide solution, including an overall equation of uh, the chemical reaction occurring in the fuel cell. Okay, so there's a couple of things it's asking for here. All right, the chemistry of the alkaline hyd uh, alkaline hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. 
Okay, so what's the chemistry behind it? The idea is that you're using chemical potential energy to form electrical energy. Okay, that's the idea. And, oh my goodness, energy. Okay, so that's the chemistry behind it. You should have oxidant and reductant in it. So we're going to look at these and work out which ones are the uh, acid and which ones are the, 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 the alkaline versions. So this one here is the acid version, so we don't want that one. And this one here is the acid version, so we don't want that one. All right, so they produce these two here. All right, again, you're looking for the hydrogen and the oxygen, All right? And uh, they will, so what you would do is you would copy out these two particular um, equations into your question, and then you'd say, okay, well, when which one's the oxidant, which one's the reductant? Okay, so remember, the oxidant undergoes reduction, and reduction is the one that is um, gaining electrons, so this is your oxidant. So it'd be no point saying that this one uh, is the one that undergoes reduction, because that's not what the question is asking, and this is the reductant, the H2. Okay. Um, uh, and what's the purpose of this potassium hydroxide? Right, the potassium hydroxide solution is uh, effectively the salt bridge, and it uh, maintains electrical neutrality. Maintains electrical neutrality, and that's important vocabulary for you to remember. Neutrality. Okay. So the idea is that you need to both be neutral uh, or overall, and so therefore the moving ions allow you to do that. All right. Um, overall equation, you can put these two together and you end up with the exact same equation as you do with the acid one. O2 plus H2, 2H2 makes uh, 2H2O. That's it. All right. Uh, and you probably should put in states as well. Uh, just when you do this, the, ox the water is, uh, comes out as liquid form, not gas form. Okay, and these are gases. Where do you get the oxygen gas from the air? Where do you get the hydrogen gas from? You have to go get, bring that from your fuel tank. Okay, so that's uh, primary, secondary fuel cells. You will need to do a lot of reading. I've uh, scanned in a couple of resources for you to take notes from, so make sure you have a look at those. All right, that's it.